he had this enough for a quilt top. So um, the ladies at the church quilted it for her, and I have the quilt now. But she got into it that way, and then later she made a log cabin quilt. And I don't know if she ever did much with it after that. She was more of an embroiderer. Well, then when I got to college, she had this whole bag of scraps from her clothes and my clothes. And I came home one day, and she was sitting by the window cutting little hexagons out. And I said, do you want some help? And she said, okay, you know, that I can help. Well, the next thing, I was doing it, and she was someplace else. So I started putting these little flowers together. Well, after I got the flower garden together, she didn't remember or didn't have the pattern anymore. And she says I, she'd have to find it. We never got around to that for how to put it together. Mm -hmm. So the little flowers ended up in a bag for a long time. And then I put them on a back, and I put them together and quilted them. And then I didn't like it, so I tore it all apart, and I still have the flowers. <laughs> in the meantime, I took a class from some ladies, and this was up in New York. I was, uh, there was a little craft shop there, and the little craft shop was in the back of the church that we were going to. And so I, they were running a quilt class, so I took the class, and I got hooked. <laughs> you know, next thing I was buying magazines, buying fabric, you know. It, it creeps into your blood, mm -hmm. doesn't it? And then I got to, I was in a little group in Newark Valley, New York, and they were really good mentors. They, you know, they, what we did was we'd get together once a week, mm -hmm. and we mostly made charity quilts, but one quilt that we would make, we drew for, and so it wasn't that each person had their own quilts unless mm -hmm. they were also making their own stuff, which several of them were, but I had four children, you know. <laughs> All I'm active and all I'm keeping me very active. Mm -hmm. So I didn't get an awful lot of quilting done on my own. I did do a, um, I did from scratch, did one of those grandmother flower gardens quilt, mm -hmm. quilted it, had it. I'd seen it in McCall's magazine, decided I was going to do that. And I had it all done. And then I started, and that was the one that I was actually finishing here. I started a Dresden plate. Mm -hmm. and. Somehow, I don't know, somewhere in there I learned that you're supposed to use 100% cotton mm -hmm. and that it makes better quilts. Well, try to find 100% cotton in 1970, let's see. This must have been when I started that. It had to have been about 78, 79. Oh, impossible. You know, it was all poly cotton. You couldn't find 100% cotton. But I found this little, I found a department store that had a little department of fabric in it and they had a section that was all 100% cottons but they were all those little bright prints mm -hmm. so I couldn't find a whole lot of anything so I just bought a quarter yard of this, quarter yard of that, quarter yard of the other and, and I decided to cut it out and start playing with it. I had a Dresden plate template so I put together all those Dresden plates mm -hmm. and then I thought hmm Okay, what am I going to do for the background? In the meantime, my brother was getting married, and my mother decided that we should have a double wedding ring quilt for him. Oh, yeah, that's jumping from the frying pan into the fire. Yeah, well, oh. so she'd always wanted to make one of these double wedding rings she, for all of us, you know. So we got the fabric together, and my father and my mother and everybody in the family sitting there drawing these little things out and cutting them and getting them ready, and I lined them up, and... She did most of the piecing. I did some of it, but she did most of it. And then I got it to quilt. He, they gave it to him for his wedding mm -hmm. and then um, got around to quilting. It took me five years. I kept getting tendonitis, but it's that mountain mist pattern. Yes. And their their particular way of quilting it. And I was like, oh, this is taking so long. In the meantime, like I say, I had this other one that I had kind of half done and it was put away. Well. My initial intention was to, I had bought fabric for the back of that quilt, mm -hmm. and it was the same fabric that was used in the centers and, and the little mm -hmm. melons. But I looked at it and I thought, you know, when I get to the center point on that, it's not going to be very much fun quilting it when I hit that seam. And I found out about seamless backs. So I decided, okay, I'm getting a seamless back for this double wedding ring quilt. It'd be easier to quilt. And now I had a lot left over for something else. 
So I decided it would work fine for that Dresden plate, you know. So you were... I started applicating the Dresden plates on. I cut my squares. I didn't have as many Dresden plates as I had squares to get the kind of, mm -hmm. you know. I probably could have made more except for somewhere in there in Lady Circle Patchwork Quilting. I saw this picture of a quilt that had used the colored pieces that had turned them and it, so it made a scallopy edge. Mm -hmm. And I kind of liked that edge and I thought, hmm. So I counted out the number that I had and I thought, well, you know, if I applique these onto the back and I don't have enough to go all the way around, but if I alternated them with white, I could get enough to do the color with white in between all the way around that quilt. I figured that, that would look really nice and I liked that idea. So I started working on it and realized that I didn't have enough white to make all those pieces. Now, and I called Tumbleweed up in Cambridge, Massachusetts. I bought it on a trip. And they didn't have any more. They couldn't guarantee that it would match and all this other stuff. So I said, okay, what am I going to do? And I got to looking at it and I thought, hmm, I think I'm going to take those plates back off and I'll put a yellow center in it. Now it's Aster instead of Dresden plate. So, but I'll just do a reverse applique and put yellow centers in it and cut out from behind it so that I got the little white pieces from that, and that should be enough to go all the way around. And it was, you know, so I created the second quilt. And that's the one I was working on when they saw it and decided that I should teach quilting. Oh, my. Yeah, that one had a history. That one, you know, kind of evolved, but it's kind of one of my favorites. It's at home. It's hand-quilted, hand-paced.